Inside Texas Politics with Jason Whiteley starts now. And good morning from South Victory. We are beginning with the state's Republican Party chairman, but first let's get you caught up on some other political news that also caught our attention in the past few days. On Thursday, Dallas's sick leave ordinance will go into effect. It requires private businesses operating inside the city to provide paid sick time for their employees. Now, the Texas Public Policy Foundation has threatened to sue the city over it, saying employment law is the responsibility of the state and the feds, not city halls. The Trump administration wants to make a change to food stamps, and that could mean 125,000 Texans no longer get federal assistance. That's according to the Texas Tribune. The administration says it wants to close a loophole where some people are getting assistance without first being vetted. And this was odd. I hope you've seen this before. A fake presidential seal up on screen as President Trump walked out at an event last week. Look closely here. It's a double-headed eagle like the Russian coat of arms and is holding golf clubs in one talon and cash in the other. The group that hosted this event said this was an innocent mistake, evidently the wrong image selected in a Google search. Still, someone got fired over it. And now to the build up to 2020, Republicans no longer taking Texas for granted. The party is putting people and money on the ground in areas across the state they haven't in recent years. It's a new effort that James Dickey, the chairman of the Republican Party of Texas, is heading and joining the questioning as always is Bud Kennedy from the Star-Telegram. Good to see you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. It's no, very good you. to be here. You, you mentioned the other day when you were on the phone with me about uh, the, the additional boots on the ground, paid staffers on the ground. What was it before? What is it now? And why the change? So it's just one example of how seriously we are making sure that we get the message out to every Texas voter that we want to earn their votes. Uh, last election, we had eight paid Republicans. Republican Party of Texas staffers on the field around the state and this election the plan is by the middle of the general election we'll have 150. Does that suggest to me or to our viewers that, that the party is, is concerned? That this might be closer or this might go the other way? My my message to every every Republican is be concerned enough to make sure you do everything you have to do to make all the terrible doomsday predictions fall flat. How concerned are you? Uh, concerned enough to be putting in a whole lot of time. I just, uh, I actually, I was telling you, I m made a trip to D.C. to go raise money there to help us. And in fact, we're uh, pretty excited to be announcing that our available cash on hand just for the RPT just passed a million dollars for the first time in five years. Congratulations on that. Mr. Chairman, you've got a success story to tell about the party, but some of the grassroots are, are not so happy. And they, uh, you know, they're listening to Colonel West talk about running for the chairmanship. Uh, they see the squad. They see Democrats who fight. They say that they seem like uh, Colonel West might fight. They're not sure you fight. What do you say? Well, first of all, it's the job of the candidates and it's the job of the office holders to fight. It's not the job of the Republican Party chair to fight. The job of the Republican Party chair is to organize the best possible. First of all, my legal responsibility is to run the primary. So to actually have experience knowing how to accept the filings, to be even handed and fair. In fact, it's my legal responsibility to fairly execute on the handling of the election. If in fact I were taking sides in primaries, I would be violating not only our party rules, but I would be violating the necessity of delivering on that free and fair election that we as Republicans take very seriously. For the grassroots that seem to be organizing new sets of complaints, this new Lone Star agenda, and you know, uh, Representative Stickland is making speeches. I saw him in, in Arlington last week. Uh, you know, what do you tell those people? They're 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 not content with the way the legislature came out. Well, first of all, I. I the party is in a unique position to say thank you for and to appreciate the things that we did get. So first of all, I am grateful that our founders set up a legislature during which it is very easy to kill bills. If not, the 100 plus years that Democrats controlled Texas between Reconstruction and 2003 when Republicans first took over the House, uh, the, the devastation would have been irreparable. And instead, our founders set up a policy where it is difficult to pass things. And so given that it is difficult to pass things, the fact that they passed a multi-billion dollar tax cut, the fact that they uh, passed important protections on life, important protections on relig religious liberty, important protections on our Second Amendment rights, there, and so much more. We actually had 92 bills passed that address a platform plank in, our, in the Republican Party of Texas platform. Important and useful things, not have 
headline grabbers, like a city can no longer annex you without your vote. You know, Bud mentioned Jonathan Stickland. He, he had the Star Telegram reported the other day about the meeting he had with some grassroots grassroots Tea Party folks uh, out in HEB, Hust, uh, Hearst, Euless, and Bedford. They were silent when asked how many people would support John Cornyn. Do you think he is vulnerable? I my message to everyone is to act like you're vulnerable, vulnerable whether you think or not. Uh, we, two of the 12 seats we lost last time, those were members of the Texas House who were out campaigning for other people who had money left in their bank account at the end of election night that they could have used to save those seats. So every office holder I am strongly encouraging. The good news from my standpoint, uh, and I don't know if Senator Cornyn will have a primary opponent, uh, but I, I it goes both now and back in 2014. Um, I have never seen a politician who works harder, an office holder who works harder to earn the reelection. You know, in 2014, when I was out in East Austin as Travis County Party Chair uh, at Juneteenth events, his team was the only office holder team out well, there with me. J James, considering that, why do you think Senator Cornyn is having trouble with some grassroots, grassroots conservatives? Uh, the beautiful thing about the party is it's my job to set the infrastructure, it's my job to raise the resources, it's my job to handle the elections completely freely and fairly, and then we have the utmost faith in the voters to make the right call. And the, the last election for Senator Cornyn, he won by 27 points. The last election for Senator Cruz, he won by less than 2.2. 7%. Um, it's up to the voters to make those choices. We're going to make sure they have the strongest foundation, no matter who the party's nominee. 45 seconds left here. What's your take on the end of straight to vote and how that affects Republicans this cycle? Well, the one thing I know that had we ended straight ticket voting earlier, I'm very confident Ed Emmett would still be the county judge in Houston. There wouldn't have been dozens of excellent qualified judges wiped out in a single day. As a small government conservative, the one thing I know is I don't know what the unintended consequences will be of a major government effort. And this is a major government change. So I don't know. I do know we're out telling every Republican, make sure you go all the way down the ballot. Even if you're not familiar with yeah. who that House member is, you do want a House member who will pick a Republican speaker and make sure Republicans are controlling redistricting for 2020. And a million dollars cash on hand. Congratulations on that. James Dickey, the chairman of the Republican Party of Texas. Thanks for being here. Thank you.